so my colleague Annika is now putting the starting with the recording. Yep. So welcome again to the My Smart Life webinar about smart building retrofit lessons learned. My name is Gabi Kaiser and I work for Steinbach's Europa Center. We are responsible for dissemination and communication as well as exploitation uh, for the My Smart Life project. This webinar uh, will be delivered in partnership with the uh, Smart Cities Information System, SCIS, and you will hear more about SCIS in the, um, uh, in the latter part of the webinar. <laughs> Firstly, let me quickly give you um, quickly give you a rundown of who is going to be talking. Uh, we'll introduce the SCIS and the solution guides. From we'll have an introduction from our colleague Kishao from Vito. Then our three Lighthouse City representatives will present retrofit initiatives from Nantes, Hamburg and Helsinki. We have Marine and Jonathan from Nantes Metropole. They will present Mon Projet Renov. Margit from Hamburg will present the retrofit measures at the Rudolf Steiner School in Bergedorf, which is a listed building. And Maria from Helsinki will talk about retrofitting and the role of housing associations. At the end, we will have plenty of time for discussion. So um, I will start the webinar with a brief overview of my smart life. So as you can see, as you can see in a minute, <laughs> As you can see, as you can see, the My Smart Life project is a Horizon 2020 funded project. Um, 21 million euro is the overall funding amount of the project. Um, the commission funded 19 million of that. Uh, we have a consortium of 27 European partners in six countries. This includes municipalities like Nord Metropole or Hamburg and Helsinki, but also research institutions like Cartif, um, Nobatec, and Technalia. Um, uh, there's another slide coming up that gives you an overview of the whole consortium, but there are also businesses included. The coordination of My Smart Life is being done by Cartif, and the focus of the whole project is energy, mobility, and ICT. We started our project in December 2016, and My Smart Life will still last until November 21. So the next slide will show you, will show, the next slide will show you the consortium of My Smart Life, and I've kind of penciled in um, the organizations and local authorities that will present today. So there's Nantes Metropole, Hamburg, Helsinki, and Steinbeis. I made a little mistake and I noticed that this morning on the train that I forgot to pencil and consult. So Margaret, forgive me, but you kind of run under the Hamburg stream for me. So if we move on to the next slide, My Smart Life is part of basically what we call the um, the Smart City family. There are now up to, up to basically today, we have 17 Smart City projects that are being funded by the Commission under the Horizon 2020 funding stream. Um, you can see a list of all of them and that list I actually took from the uh, from the SEIS Smart City Information System uh, website. Um, and you can see, um, I've, I've kind of penciled in My Smart Life, but all the other projects are also on that slide. So if you're interested, you can look at, um, you can look at the other projects. Now, with regard to My Smart Life, um, I mentioned that before, the, um, the lighthouse cities are Nantes, Hamburg, and Helsinki. And um, and as um, as all smart city projects, we have three follower cities that are Bitgosh, Rijeka, and Palencia. And then um, 
and then so so that's basically the consortium as i mentioned before i'd like to um now that you know a bit about my smart life let me pass the word to hishao from vito uh, who will introduce scis and the solution guides to you um hishao is a researcher at vito energyville and vito is project coordinator for scis but also for the eip marketplace now, with regard to Hishao, he has a Master's of Science in Energy from the University of Leuven and has previously also worked as a research assistant at City University of Hong Kong. So, Hishao, the floor is yours. Thank you, Gabi. Can you, can you all hear me? I can. Okay, yeah, that's very <laughs> good. <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks, Gabi, for the nice introduction, and thanks for having me in this webinar. Um, yes, I can control. Okay. Uh, now I will give a short um, presentation on SKIS and the solution booklet that we were we have been doing. Um, in first of all, the mission of SKIS uh, in. 2014, the Smart Cities Information System Initiative was launched to gather, to manage, and to analyze the data from all the smart cities and uh, communities projects and the, the, the energy efficient building, buildings projects managed by the European Commission. And the idea is to yield uh, evidence basis for uh, policy advice and transferable knowledge to further communicate, disseminate, and uh, foster the replication. Uh, then the focus of the SKIS in the next stage is to work towards upscaling of the best practices, involve a wide variety of smart city stakeholders, and to improve the technical side of the, smart, uh, of the SKIS database. Then to furthermore uh, cooperate with other initiatives uh, supporting replication as Garvey just mentioned, for instance, the EIP marketplace. And by the way, you can find the, the, the SKIS website on this slide. Um, so the solution booklet is uh, a part of the task, SKIS task. Uh, then it's a summary of a specific smart city solution or a group, a group of solutions. And uh, it's primarily written for cities and project facilitators in the city. There are already six solution booklets uh, available on our website, as you can see on the screen now. And um, more will come during the course of this year. So the solution booklet, booklet focuses on the smart city solution from technical, financial, social, and governance perspective. And it aims to further dive into the uh, especially the replication potential and the implementation barriers by gathering the experience from different projects of uh, different European countries. And the building, retro, building envelope retrofit solution booklet that I will be presenting today, uh, this one I, I, we, will finish, uh, it, we will finish it by the end of April. And one aim of this webinar is to learn actually learn from my smart life project and to gather some relevant experience from different participants in this webinar and to further enrich the content of the booklet. Now I will briefly present the, the current content of this booklet. Um, so first of all, some figures and facts on the building, uh, AU building stock. Uh, as we all know that buildings are the single largest energy consumer in Europe, accounting for 40% uh, of the energy consumption in, in the EU, nearly 35% of the buildings in Europe are already more than 50 years old and or almost 75% of the building stock is considered as actually as uh, energy inefficient. And but at the same time, the building renovation rate stays rather low, which is only around 1%. Uh, depending on the country, I think 0.4 to 1.2%, depending on the country. And uh, the, the, the renovation rate, renovation of existing building stock can uh, obviously lead to significant energy savings. And it could uh, reduce the total energy consumption in Europe by 
five to six percent per year. Um, many EU-funded projects have uh, a focus on uh, residential building retrofits by analyzing a set of nearly uh, 50 building uh, retrofit demonstrators via SKIS. Half of more than even more than half of the re renovation project and achieve energy savings of 50% at least and up to 75%. Um, building an envelope retrofit uh, clearly plays a major role and is the logical first step in achieving energy efficiency and untapping this huge energy saving potential. So, uh, from technical side, the many solutions. Um, many building envelope retrofit solutions are already very much mature in the market and the most common ones uh, are on the screen for instance exter external in internal wall insulation cavity wall insulation roof attic insulation um, low e uh, double triple glazed windows door replacement and on top of the on top of that you have external or internal shading or green roof um, however, some technical barriers still exist uh, that slow down the renovation to a larger scale. The main technical uh, barriers we identified is the, the, the lack of experience in the building or construction industry. There is a critical lack of labor force in both uh, numbers and skills, so both quality and quantity. Besides uh, the complexity of large scale renovation work, sometimes brings the extra layer of uh, implementation difficulties. Um, next, by going through some literature and publications, we've identified four main retrofit business models um, automized market model, market intermediation model one-stop shop model and the energy service agreement model. Uh, furthermore, the identified financial bar barriers are, first of all, the high upfront cost, um, which makes uh, the fact that the lacking of the, the, the financial cap capabilities from the end users, from the homeowners, and the long payback time and the negative uh, net present value, the payback time in some cases could be even up to 30 to 50 years. Uh, last but not, not the least, the lack of comprehensive financing schemes, financing uh, systems aligned with specific needs of the building owners, which, uh, which makes another barrier. Uh, from the societal uh, perspective, uh, retrofit has clear economic, um, environmental and uh, social benefits especially to the homeowners. It helps to reduce the reliance on the mechanical and electrical systems to operate the building comfortably. Uh, it, it reduces the heating and cooling demand, which brings uh, lower operation costs, energy costs, and it reduces the fuel uh, poverty and energy dependence, which helps to uh, save energy and associated natural resources. And not to mention like the benefits after renovation of having thermally comfortable buildings and the reduced noise levels and improved acoustical comfort uh, and potentially increased uh, property values according to some studies and many more. So um, there, are also, there are various drivers identified in relevant studies and surveys. For instance, people have to, uh, well, some buildings have to uh, undergo some uh, some type of renovations, or the uh, some some residents they just want a new kitchen or bathroom, um, some planned um, building expansion, or building owners wish to improve indoor comfort, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but Actually, energy performance is barely considered as a top priority due to the lack of awareness from the and, and homeowners um, on these energy issues. And apart from that, the absence of financing schemes, like what we mentioned just now, 
and the hustle of relocation, reallocation, sorry, the works, the renovation works, and the fear of the risks makes some other societal barriers in reality. Uh, therefore, the building owner engagement is a key point in the, in the, in the re renovation process, and it is utmost important to engage building owners in order to upskill the renovation project. Then um, many stakeholders could be involved in the retrofit project. Uh, for instance, the building owners, occupants, uh, facility managers, designers, uh, suppliers, contractors, uh, municipalities, etc. And the uh, the success of the success delivery of the project it generally involves active interactions among different stakeholders. For instance, building owners have to be involved, stay involved from the very beginning of the project, whereas building owners, uh, uh, sorry, the designers and the, the contractors join the project at the design or the implementation uh, phases, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then, Last but not the least, um, considering the barriers we we mentioned above, we just identified, we also try to propose some solution pathways and uh, potential suggestions. First of all, the municipalities can play a very crucial role in facilitating and upscaling the retrofit. Um, by reducing the risks and the uncertainties and by acting as leaders, regulators, and facilitators. So the rule of municipalities and the governments are crucially important. And um, engaging and unburdening the building owners is, essential, is an essential strategy. And it's important to um, motivate uh, the building owners and let them stay involved in the, in, in the retrofit strategies and let them know clearly the advice and different strategies of the retrofit and the benefits and the barriers. And um, from financial perspective, classic, classical loans and mortgages are available but in the market, but not uh, may not be appropriate to all of the retrofit cases. Therefore, there is a need to tap into alternative financing schemes. Um, Lastly, the rollout of uh, innovation, innovative solutions can also play a role, for instance, to increase the smart, uh, smartness of the buildings and to allow the group of building, retrofitted buildings to exchange or to, to create energy in the framework of uh, positive dis energy district or local energy community. And that is all for my presentation. Thanks, thanks for your attention. If you have questions, please feel free to do so. Thank you, Hishao, um, for that really good summary of energy retrofit and the different aspects of it. Um, I'm looking forward to our discussion later on. Um, I'd like to move on to um, our colleagues from Nantes, the Nantes team. So let me introduce Marine and Jonathan to you. Uh, Marine is working for Nantes Metropole, both of them are, uh, Marine and Jonathan, Jonathan. Um, Marine is focusing uh, in her work on renewable energy initiatives. Uh, her background, from her background, she's an engineer, and her colleague Jonathan has more of a focus on energy retrofit. Uh, Jonathan, just like Marine, is also an engineer. So I'll pass the floor on to you. The non team. It's very quiet. Jonathan, Marine. Yeah, can, can you hear me better now? Yes. Hello. Okay, good. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Just a moment. Can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. Yes, we can. 
Sorry, so starting again, uh, um, just a few words about the general context first of North Metropole. We had a new climate plan in uh, 2018 with several commitments and goals to reach, uh, such as the two that you can see on the screen, to reach a reduction of 30% of energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions per inhabitant in uh, 2020 compared to, to uh, 2003 uh, levels. And by 2030, this reduction should be about, about um, 50%. Um, something that has been highlighted during a great debate that has been organized during uh, 2016 and 2017 with uh, the citizens and the local stakeholders is that the housing sector is the second biggest energy consumer uh, on North Metropole's area. So actions should be taken for uh, this sector to reduce its emission. To do so, we have a roadmap for energy transition that has been written um, after this great debate for energy transition. Several commitments have been taken in this roadmap uh, about uh, energy retrofitting, renewables, mobility, circular economy, and so on. And the first uh, commitment is about energy retrofitting. In this commitment, uh, we have several points, such as creating a new system of financial aids that support energy renovation of private housing. Another one is about doubling the efforts to support renovation works for low-income households, with a figure of 500 housing units per year and also to support the economic sector of the energy transition on North Metropole area. And I will, I will give the floor to Jonathan to get into more details about mon projet en offre. So we continue with um, global system mon projet en offre and try to increase the number of energy retrofitting on our territory to reach these uh, commitments uh, by simplifying the access to information and um, involving professionals in the process. So we are some, somewhere between a um, market intermission model and one-stop shop, as we will see uh, later. Um, we began in 200, 2017 with the first web platform focused on uh, individual housing um, and with a dedicated, dedicated team um, to advise and support condominiums in the uh, energy retrofit project. Um, after analyzing this first uh, model, um, we went to a second version on a unified website on our uh, municipality website with more or less a similar level of information, but we stopped what we used to do uh, that was uh, connecting uh, individuals and professionals through this web platform, but we will uh, bring new services uh, through it and we combine it with a new and simplified financial aid system and uh, we increased our links with professionals. So we have quite big uh, financial aid for condominium, as you see, we help studies up to 50% and energy saving works up to one third of the cost. Um, we began in 2015 with uh, state um, um, state aids, and we follow with our own uh, budget. On individual houses, we create something for energy um, audit or and uh, energy saving works with up to nine thousand euros. All this really helps to uh, build a system in which professionals have an interest to uh, involve them. The goal for those two uh, systems is to achieve less than 80 uh, kilowatt, kilowatt hours per square meters per year. We also increase the financial aid to low-income household with free energy audit 
and uh, aid that can go up to 50 or 70 percent uh, of the works cost uh, when they do at least 25 percent of energy saving. On the new website, mm -hmm. we are going to create as well uh, online aid file deposit to simplify uh, the deposit, but also to help us combine with the new management tool to better follow up the renovation. Was is one thing that is quite difficult because a lot of things are are done without us uh, to know it. Uh, so through this, we will better know what is done, and we will be able to uh, also better work with professional and have that as well uh, more time to work and support the project uh, because we will have less time to uh, just um, follow the deposit. Um, Mon Project Enab is part of all free support uh, with a one space energy information where people can have technical, juridical and financial advice. Uh, specifically more for houses um, and uh, with a lot of animations for the general public, of course, like housing energy forums, callers meetings, uh, thermal works, and so on. And we have for condominiums an internal team of seven energy transition managers that supports condominiums, helping them to make an informed decision together at the same time. And that's really the point, how 10, 100 or 1,000 people can take a decision at the same time and an informed decision. Um, they also are uh, in the management of eight application and thus when we identify identify the obstacles to efficient renovation or uh, whether in uh, the way uh, professional works or in the way we have um, invent our uh, aid system, we can try to find, provide pragmatic solutions. We also, of course, communicate on all this system to let people know that we can help them. And we give uh, a list of professionals uh, that are able to meet the specification of Montpellier. It's not really a label, but we they said us they can do the job. Uh, if we really find that uh, they do it in an improper way, we can uh, put them off this list. Um, but one of the crucial things is the link we are building with professional to, to, to work. We co-produced statement of work, we define together what should be done to a good uh, retrofitting. Um, and that gave uh, such uh, documents that you can't read, of course, that just to give an idea, they just have them to quote, uh, to, yeah. to confirm that they can do everything and the sign it. Uh, so we have such like a contract with them when uh, they work on this uh, Mon Projet Renov uh, system. We also organized stakeholders meeting, thematic workshop, visit of photo of condominiums or houses. And we are going to start with my smart life as well an evaluation by instru instrumenting 20 buildings and that will help professionals to improve this, their works uh, and that will help us to prove that the works done gives real uh, energy and money uh, economy. Um, we also work a lot with the management agents because that's a point in condominiums. There are the people that can help or block us. If the system is too much complicated, too much, too much complicated, they won't offer uh, their co-owners uh, um, retrofit uh, works program and we will be unable to uh, achieve our goal. So one thing we've done uh, recently is simplifying the work of the management agents, specifically by paying 90% of the aids we gave before the beginning of the work so they 
don't have to invent quite complicated system to get money that we will give them uh, after we give them directly the money to simplify it and we are launching a specific program to help management agents to calculate and edit the financial plan for each co-owner before the vote including low income uh, household and to be able to present them a uh, financial plan so that they can vote uh, being really good informed. If you have some questions, you can ask them at the end of the webinar. Thank you very much uh, to both of you, Marine and John, uh, Jonathan, for your insights. Um, I'd like to introduce the next speaker to you, and that is Margit. Margit works for a company called Consult, and Consult is in Hamburg and is actually supporting the city of Hamburg with regard to communication in my smart life, but also with regard to retrofit actions. So, uh, Margaret has a very interesting example of retrofitting a listed building. Margaret, the floor is yes, yours. Yes, I'm here. Uh, hello, good morning. Hi there. So, hi there. Should I start or no? Okay. I don't hear you right now. Um, I can hear you. You just um, you've got the right to uh, go okay. ahead and, and show your slides. There you go. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Um, well, I am talking about the um, uh, uh, very special, not about an apartment building and living but a single use house. It's an old school, which is under protection and it's situated in the borough of Bergedorf, which is part of Hamburg. And there we are, um, have a special retrofitting area with 4,500 inhabitants. Most of them uh, live in um, apartments and condominiums. And we have about 500 buildings in this area. And one of them is the old school, which is situated, I will show you on the map, um, at the, at the um, border of the, uh, it's at the, at the border of the, of the area. You can see there um, Bergedorf, Süd, um, and the yellow uh, circle or ellipse is the one where the school is situated. And on the left side, you can see the uh, one of the buildings. We have several buildings of this kind and this age. It was built in 1856, and virtually nothing had had been done <laughs> in this time, at least not in the last 50 years. So we had a very special situation. It's a um, public school. They don't have much money. And um, so they asked us uh, if we could help them and um, uh, help them to uh, save energy and to also install um, re regenerative energy systems. So that's what we did. We um, tried to find out the determ uh, de determined uh, the energy requirements. There were uh, about 250 students in the school. And we started to um, um, to uh, to find uh, um, uh, to uh, support them by um, a very important point. They didn't, as I said, they didn't have much money. Um, they needed more money, so we also supported them by getting public funding, and um, also, of course, by planning and realization. And um, we also uh, tried, because the school has a very important role in, in, in our area. And so everybody was very, um, sorry, I go back. Everybody was very um, anxious to see what is happening there. So we uh, um, established a local network and 
very intensively um, informed the public inside the in our area but also in Bergedorf um, at all because it's a very um, good example um, about how to retrofit such an old building. Um, here you can see the inside of the building and you can see the old walls and um, at the building, all the old buildings, we have five buildings in the area and they are under protection and you may not, you are not allowed to change on the outside. So we couldn't put anything on the facade and um, we thought about what can we do and so the heating was put into the walls. You see one of the old school rooms where there's um, our group just looking at uh, everything and uh, our architect is explaining and you can see what we did on the right side. Um, the heating system is completely uh, uh, hidden in the, in the wall and there's this white material uh, which is um, coming uh, at the end to of course to um, put it in the walls and not to be seen anymore. And you can see on the left side um, there is um, uh, there are new windows. We had the old windows uh, in the buildings. I don't know if they were from 1856 but they are very very bad and so they um, we put in new windows and uh, we, I go to the next one, we um, did some uh, roof insulation and also the the ground of the building. Um, so there were, was insulation as well and, and on the ground and on the roof. Uh, so this made a lot of um, uh, saving energy but also because this wouldn't, there was not enough room to uh, build a new um, heating system. So, uh, so on the um, area, on the school area, a new uh, house was um, built where also the new energy supply system was installed with a heat pump and uh, also um, solar um, energy, solar thermal energy on the roofs was uh, um, installed. And from this new energy supply system, all the other buildings were um, or are uh, heated now, um, supported by the thermal, um, solar thermal heat. And um, so we have a, a very small local network, uh, heating system network. And um, this is very important for the future because we hope that this heating system might also get expanded and go to the rest of the area to heat the, the rest of the area. And that's why, as I said, we had this, um, we took also, this was one of the reasons we, we informed uh, all the neighbors very much. We invited them, uh, we had, they could look at the, the um, installations and they could ask us and we are still in the, maybe not during my smart life, but in the future we might have a bigger um, um, uh, heating, local heating network with this. So um, we had, when you here on the right side, you can see the new building which is, is uh, uh, built, has been built. And um, I just would like to talk about the lessons we have learned. Um, we had uh, really come down with the energy consumption in existing buildings and the old buildings by 50%, which is quite nice. Actually, we didn't expect that. And uh, we could uh, preserve the historical facade and um, find a way how to to keep the uh, outside and to look at still the way it had been looking in 1856. Um, but also we had the uh, plus very energy efficient new building with the heat pump which is not to be seen from the street but of course if you go on the, on the area of the school you can see it and it's also a very nice central building where students can go and have, the, have uh, their lunches and so it's um, a very good win-win situation. Um, what was very important was the very close cooperation with the school administration. So we had um, regular meetings and uh, with them 
and we would, uh, our architects would and technicians would talk with them every step, every single step, because as I said, they don't have much money and they need a very close, they needed a very close um, support. And this is what we did um, in, in during my smart life and um, in our project. Now we are starting to monitor the whole building and to see uh, what it really, um, um, uh, what kind of effects we really had. And this would not have been possible if we hadn't uh, had this close contact um, with the school. Another important uh, uh, aspect was the integration in school work because we, we said um, this is not only about technological improvement but also why shouldn't students uh, wor learn about what is going on in the school and um, what is about um, energy saving and climate change. So there were a lot of um, uh, seminars inside the school work. Um, our colleagues would go there and talk uh, to the students and uh, tell them about what happened. So at the end, um, the students were so excited by it that they um, um, uh, produced a movie, a demonstration film, which showed the whole process of the retrofitting. And we think this is a very good way to um, to um, uh, give this uh, knowledge to young people and to to um, help them to uh, to learn and understand about uh, things uh, uh, these things uh, which are going on in, in their school, but also maybe in the whole area. And another uh, very important part is that. Um, I think my uh, one of the speakers already said it's very important to talk to the um, owners of the buildings and we we found out that this example of the school um, convinced some not all of the other owners but some of the owners to also do something at their building and to to install new technologies and to uh, change their heating systems and um, to also try to um, have uh, public uh, funding. And of course, we would help them also um, uh, when, they are, when they were looking for um, things like that. And uh, we also did public events about that. For instance, we had a big um, um, picnic on the school area where the whole um, uh, uh, area, the, all the people around were invited. So this is very nice and many people really had uh, a lot of, has have learned a lot about retrofitting in our area by that. So at the end it was a very good um, uh, project for single use building and um, here you can see also the funding and we have in, in Hamburg, it has been, has become a very good example um, how to treat a brick building that, like that because Hamburg is a city of, when you come to see us, you will see that we have, lot, have lots of these old brick buildings and this um, uh, retrofitting measure really has shown um, good ways and examples how to deal with these uh, brick buildings, even if they are not um, um, if they're, they're not apartments or condominiums. So thank you very much for listening to me and of course I can um, answer your questions afterwards. Thank you Margit for your presentation. Um, I would like to move on to the last example of a retrofit initiative in My Smart Life and that's a presentation by Maria Vitanen from Helsinki. Helsinki is also one of the uh, lighthouse cities in my smart life. So Maria is, based, is the representative from Helsinki. She is working for the local authority there and she's managing all the my smart life activities in Helsinki. She has a master's degree in city, urban, community and regional planning from the University of Aalto. And she will tell us a bit about uh, Helsinki's private housing stock and um, the engagement there. Maria, the floor is yours. Thank you, Gobi. Uh, can you hear me? And 
Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, greetings from very rainy Helsinki. It's nice to see all 35 of you here, or at least I can imagine, based on the number on the uh, upper right corner of my uh, go to meeting. Um, and let me just start by this image. In the Horizon Lighthouse projects, we have common themes that express themselves in actual cities in unique forms. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we're so unique that we couldn't learn from each other. And at this point, I want to thank you, uh, thank my uh, colleagues for great projects uh, and presenting them here. And I think we can learn some lessons from them in Helsinki as well. And I hope uh, some of you, you participants in this call can also have the possibility to present your projects in future forums that we can all learn from. But back to Helsinki. So this is our city challenge. Uh, our city challenge is to be carbon neutral city in 2035 already. Uh, if you're interested in that program, you can find it uh, over the internet in English, or you can contact me that, and I can provide you the link. But as you can see in this picture, uh, it is the breakdown of the city's emissions right now. And of course, we need to work in all areas to achieve our goals. But as you can see, the most, <laughs> the biggest area is the uh, heating consumption of the buildings. So what to do about that? Well, uh, naturally, the city as an organization can impact its own buildings. Uh, there are buildings hosting muni municipal services such as schools, and there is a quite large stock of public housing units we have a direct impact to. For example, there is a program through which we install solar panels on our pu public buildings, like the Hidden Givi School in, in this picture here. If you want to hear or read more about these uh, interventions, uh, you can find our environmental reports uh, from last year's over the internet in English as well. And I can send you the link if you're interested. But uh, as you can see from the slide, uh, the city organization itself accounts only for 15% of the greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and this is true for the building sector as well. So we have to look at the private buildings and especially the private housing stock. And this means we need to work with the citizens. We need to work with the citizens and help them to find profitable and practical ways to improve energy efficiency of their homes. And this picture is from a citizen workshop in 2018 we have held in the My, My Smart Life project with the uh, housing cooperative board members in the Merihoka district. But more, more about that uh, in the future slides. Before I go there, uh, just a few points uh, about the background of, of the Helsinki city private housing scene. And hearing these, you can perhaps better assess whether these ideas are applicable in your context. First of all, the Finnish multi or buildings or condominiums are typically owned by a housing cooperative. That is an ownership format that means that the cooperative owns the building and the homeowners, homeowners own shares, which grants them the right to a unit in the building, which is their own home. This means that the decisions about energy retrofits uh, need to be taken by the cooperative through its board or a year, yearly shareholder meeting. And this means that in effect, instead of individual citizens, we somehow need to work with the housing cooperatives in Helsinki. And secondly, in Finland, the majority of buildings in the cities are heated with district heat. And in Helsinki, this share is uh, 
as high as 90 percent. This is a very efficient form of providing heat. Of course, uh, its emissions depend also on the method it's, of its production. And, and here I want to also mention that the housing stock in Finland has generally good level of energy efficiency due to our climate. And, but this means that it's not always self-evident what is the best solution for energy retrofit. Uh, there are some low-hanging fruits, but most, mostly it requires a lot of knowledge to know what is profitable and effective. And last point uh, is wisdom from the field, so to say, but also some academic studies indicate that housing cooperatives market is underserviced in terms of energy efficiency improving services and retrofit services. And I think the problem is both on the supply and demand. Companies are not so uh, eager to operate in this market because there are risks uh, working with this type of cooperative decision making and on the other hand the housing cooperatives don't necessarily have enough knowledge to buy or know how to buy. But in any case um, when trying to work with the housing cooperatives we have to think big and small at the same time. We, we try to understand the situation of individual housing cooperatives, but we also try to look for scale. This means that we um, need to identify the typical housing types in the city and, for example, find model solutions for them. And this also means that we try to work with districts. Uh, this has social benefits as well, because then we can work with the local social networks or help to facilitate the birth of new local social networks around these problems. And in the MySmart Life, we have been working with the district of Merihaka, and it is a very representative district in, term, in terms of housing stock in Helsinki. It's been constructed uh, in the 1960s through 1980s, and that's a major part when Helsinki housing stock has been built. So here is shortly what we have done in Merihoko. Uh, we have worked from various perspectives in My Smart Life there, and together with our project partners, uh, startup Salusfin Research Institute VTT, the district heat company Helen, we have implemented and tried out many things. We have approached the energy efficiency um, in one building so that we have installed dynamic heating control with smart thermostats. And uh, in addition to providing um, dynamic heating for energy saving in that building, those thermostats also have enabled Helen to test demand response service that helps to cut the peaks of district heat demand when applied on a larger scale, uh, which is important when you think about the district heat system. Uh, we have also conducted some studies that provide knowledge for the housing, housing cooper, cooperatives to uh, make plans for larger scale renovations. Uh, one was heat map images and the other was economic technical evaluation about the best alternatives for energy efficiency renovation in the re uh, in a few model buildings in the district and the district-wide uh, solutions. Um, we have also collaborated with the Energize project who implemented uh, this experiment where citizens uh, or inhabitants could test how they could reduce energy use in their daily lives. Uh, we also organized meetings for the housing cooperatives together to disseminate the results of the long-term retrofit studies. In these meetings, we also studied the needs for the housing cooperatives and how to make it easier for them to do energy retrofits. So what did we learn through this exercise? Um, I think the general lesson is that long-term support within the city is necessary. Uh, so beyond this project, we need to establish some structures for the support of the housing cooperatives. Uh, and also one second lesson is that district level housing cooperative collaboration is a good idea. Uh, 
based on these experiences. Uh, for example, in the Merihoka Housing Cooperative meetings, the people from the different boards could share knowledge and motivations and decide to pursue some projects together on the district scale or exchange information about their uh, respective renovation plans. And in the end, one practical thing that can be done is to improve the access to model solutions. Uh, the Helsinki housing stock, uh, there are different differences, but there are still some general models that can be applied. And uh, finally, to ease the supply side, the companies serving or potentially serving housing cooperatives should be supported uh, to make it easier for them to work with the housing cooperatives. So, how do we intend to apply these lessons? In Helsinki, also as part of My Smart Life, we will start a pro program this year to serve housing cooperatives as a city, and it's called the Energy Renaissance Program. And I think it resembles to some extent uh, Nantes uh, Mont Projet Renov. But here is a short uh, introduction to that program that I unfortunately don't have time to go through very uh, in a detailed way. But you can contact me if you want to know more details. But in short, uh, we tried to uh, look at the path through which housing cooperatives need to go through to implement an energy retrofits. And uh, here are the steps we have identified from engagement to the actual implementation. And for each of these stages, we try to offer uh, support from the city's side. And, uh, spring, this program is going to go through the political decision making and hopefully during the fall, we can start to recruit the team members that will provide this service. And thanks for your uh, attention. And I'm happy also to answer questions. Um, thank you, Maria. That was very interesting. Uh, and thanks to all of the uh, Lighthouse City representatives from My Smart Life that have presented their retrofit examples, cases. Uh, what we would like to do now is we would like to move to a discussion where we are looking at general retrofit experiences that you have made or questions that you have. We would also look uh, like to kind of touch on the barriers and lessons learned. And it doesn't matter if it's with regard to technical aspects or business aspects or and you what is your experience with the retrofit? What questions do you have? What are the lessons learned from your own experiences? I'm kind of opening the floor. So basically all you need to do is unmute yourself and speak up. I think this is also basically uh, the part where we can kind of our experiences, we as the group that are now taking part in the in this webinar, feed into the solution booklet that he Xiao is working on. So uh, it's actually a really great opportunity to, for you to kind of uh, um, speak up and ask your questions or um, or have an initial discussion with us with regard to uh, barriers and lessons learned. Maybe I will just give a compliment, uh, Jonathan Lefebvre. Um, one thing I forgot uh, to say is that uh, one uh, important, important point is to stabilize the level of financial aid in time. Uh, we had big difficulties in France uh, because the national system uh, had a lot of uh, variation and as in condominiums you have you need time to uh, build a project if the uh, financial aid always change people are yeah. lost and uh, they can uh, have 
take a decision, an informed decision. So we try at local level to stabilize it as uh, more as we can. Uh, and we try to uh, ask the state, national state, to do the same, but it's not always uh, easy. Just this complement for steps. Okay, I think that's that's a valid point. And if I understand you correctly, you you were saying that subsidies that come from national government change or or they don't change, and it's hard to kind of communicate them, right? Exactly. So and when uh -huh. you begin uh, with yeah. the project, you announce um, a level of subsidies, but one year after, when you come back uh, in front of all the co-owners. Sometimes you have to say now it's not uh, this amount is less. Sometimes more, but not always. Uh, yeah. And if it's more, it's okay. But uh, when it's less, it can be a uh, very difficult. Uh, it can be very difficult to keep the dynamic uh, of the retrofit. Yeah. Okay. I understand. So that would actually then kind of cover the kind of political aspect. And I think I've experienced something very similar in Germany with regard to uh, feed-in tariff, for example, you know, feed-in tariff being announced at X and then the following year it's been reduced. So it kind of makes certain investments less attractive and it kind of ties into your, uh, into your business case. Um, any other comments? So I'll be speaking here. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I have. I just have uh, a few more questions towards my smart life uh, cities. Yes. Uh, so for first one on Hamburg, there is. Uh, as, thanks for the very nice presentation. Um, just one question. So the histor historical in one of your slides, you mentioned that the historical facade of the buildings are preserved. And I just I was just wondering if it's the primary reason for of no like the envelope insulation in this case. Is that a very I mean is that the intention to just keep the facade and without doing any thermal insulation on the facade? Yes, uh, that's indeed the uh, the intention, uh, because okay. if you had put it on the outside, of course, it would have been changed, and we had a hard time to find uh, uh, subsidies for that, because it's very unusual now, and many owners, for instance, private owners say, if I put um, insulation in the inside, I lose uh, square meters, and that's why many uh, uh, private owners don't want to do it, but in this case, we had this big school, and that was not a problem because there was enough room still left even after installing uh, it inside. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then another question towards Helsinki. Uh, in your last slides, the general lessons learned, you mentioned that the general model solutions should be improved. Do you mean that there are like a lot of uh, similar type of buildings could be retrofitted with a st standardized type of procedures. Is that what you mean by this? Uh, yes, uh, to be very short, yes. <laughs> OK, OK. Yeah, but if you want to hear more, we can we can uh, discuss this in a more detail. Or do you want to add something now? Uh, could you elaborate it a bit more? Yes. Uh, yeah, well, in Helsinki, the majority of the housing stock, or a big part of it, uh, has been built in 60s, 70s and 80s, or those are the building stock that uh, has the most potential for energy saving. Uh, so, and out of those, there is a limited uh, amount of building uh, types. So, uh, we, we are sort of beginning that work that we make this, um, that I mentioned, this uh, multi-objective uh, uh, building optimization studies. So we have been choosing some of the most representative 
types from that building stock and made these uh, studies and those those show uh, somehow uh, the first first uh, ideas what could be most profitable profitable solutions for that type of building yeah okay okay thank you Jonathan Lefebvre again just to say that uh, we are more or less uh, in the same uh, process than uh, Helsinki uh, has very good uh, written here and uh, we need time to uh, support uh, condominiums and uh, bring them to a decision but if you take the time and you take the um, you, you give enough uh, support to them uh, you you can do it and we have the goal locally in North Metropole uh, to retrofit something like 700 uh, dwellings in condominiums per year so that's a big challenge and it's not enough and we will have to go further but uh, the beginning is to really go step by step and uh, this um, program uh, or diagram is a good um, way to go for it in my opinion okay thanks for this <laughs> uh, words of support and i think we we could uh, learn learn more from each other's solutions especially uh nantes and helsinki yeah any other discussion points, questions, ideas? You're very quiet. Um, I have a question. I would be interested in understanding if one of you, the ones that are still in this call, have experience with individual retrofit of individual homes and the discussion about the famous payback period. Uh, because from my previous experience before I started working for Steinbys, um, I was working in retrofit programs in the UK, in Oxfordshire. And there was always a big discussion. Um, we were talking mainly about loft insulation, cavity wall insulation, external wall insulation you cannot do or hardly do in the UK because there's so many list, listed buildings which are basically from the age like similar to the real Steiner school um, that Margaret presented so when it comes to individual homeowners paying for their retrofit and that discussion about what's the payback period oh the payback period is 30 years I don't think I want to do it um, had any of you made that experience or dealt with these arguments? Well, okay, uh, may I? May, sorry. Okay, go. Uh, uh, well, yes, we have indeed in Bagodo Sud, we had this experience very, very much. And okay. uh, because, um, well, we have not single dwellings, but we have single owners of condominiums. Okay. And um, it was very, very, they have their own gas uh, heating system for the mm -hmm. apartment. And um, when they, we talk to them, many of them, for instance, when you have older people, they say, why should we <laughs> invest? It's uh, it's good the way it is. And um, we can go on until we die. I mean, if they're 60 or 70. Yeah. So if you have a population which is more older, it's harder to convince them or to uh, make them retrofit their their um, uh, system or their apartment. That really was a big uh, challenge for us in Bergedorf. Yeah. Margaret, could you or did you make the kind of health and well-being argument? Was that something that... Well, not really health, but uh, of course we said um, we try to um, um, uh, to underline that they do something for for climate reasons, and on the long run they would it would be um, 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 they would save. No, we didn't do anything on 
on on on health reasons or well-being okay. Okay. No, we didn't. Maybe we could have done that, but no. Yeah, you. I mean, it, I guess it also depends on who your who your target audience is. If you worked with people on fuel poverty who are in fuel poverty, I mean, in the UK, for example, even homeowners are in fuel poverty. So there is this discussion about health and well-being, or the choice of some societal groups having to make the choice between buying food or heating their homes, mm -hmm. so that that. So those were the kind of discussions that we had. But there was somebody uh, else who wanted to say something. Yes, we're not all fair. We, in North Metropole, um, we just give up for most people uh, this uh, return time. Uh, or, I mean, retrofitting uh, is not bring, bringing you to save money uh, globally, uh, except for low incomes household uh, who yeah. have a high uh, level of aid and yeah. for those people uh, we achieve to bring them to uh, months um, pay, I, I, I can't find the word, I mean they, they pay each month less after a retrofitting than before but this works because they have a high aid level uh, it doesn't work for other people. For other people, the goal is more more comfort. Uh, it's really the point. Uh, the comfort is the point. And the second one is um, money you will not lose when you will uh, sell, uh, sell your dreading. Because yeah. uh, you... If you not if you don't have a retrofit, you will uh, get less money uh, at this at the time. And we are trying to uh, emulate uh, this gap. Uh, we haven't managed to give to gather uh, enough uh, results at the moment. Right. Okay. That's interesting. Anybody else would like to add something to that discussion? A few, a few more cents from my side, Michelle speaking. Uh, so, uh, as I just mentioned in my in my in my slides, that yeah, if you only focus on energy performance or if you want to save money by retrofitting, that's that's a very let's say uh, not the top top priority of the homeowners yeah. if if they want to do retrofit. Yeah. yeah. So the, the 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 very common drivers, as I mentioned just now, is like they just want to have a new kitchen or 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 a new new bathroom, or they just wish to like if it's just like like what um, the other speaker just mentioned, like okay, retrofit can clearly improve the indoor air quality or the thermal comfort right. of the building, which might bring a secondary benefit of like extend your your life or your your well well beings in the building. Mm. Then yes, that I think if if we speak of retrofitting, we should maybe well energy performance, energy savings are important, but we still need to like brand some other stuff at the same time. We yeah. have to highlight those points while we are speaking like energy performance. Mm. Yes, that's my point. Okay. Um, hello, um, this is Natalia Maiska from Pitkos. May I have a question? Hello, Natalia. Um, yes, <laughs> great. My investment um, department is not uh, present because they are in the field. Uh, but the situation in Poland is that actually uh, for the energy um, uh, management and retrofitting, it is part of the plan that is going on in the uh, public buildings. So we don't have that much um, cooperation with the private housing. And the question goes, how is it going? Meaning, um, is the private sector and they have their own idea how to uh, carry out an investment. Uh, and I was wondering whether it's, I know that you are doing that, so it is possible. Hopefully it will also happen in Poland uh, soon, but still it is more of the, um, uh, this is the decision that comes with it from the municipality and municipal housing is uh, under retrofitting management, but with the private housing, we don't have that much to um, to influence. 
Okay. Are the people interested? Are the people cooperative? How many people are actually uh, involved? And whether is it is it viable to, to, to work like that? So that's a question for Maria Vita, right? Probably, yep. Yep, Maria. Okay, yeah. Thanks for the comment, uh, Natalia. I think it's very good a good topic to discuss. Um, well, I tried to be short, but <laughs> several thoughts come to my head. Uh, I think that uh, it's a very good um, road, even going towards the private housing sector or private building sector to start with the municipal uh, building stock or municipal housing stock, because uh, that, uh, that helps to develop and uh, stimulate the market for the solutions when when the municipality has the means to to do those investments and uh, so it somehow helps the market and it can also act those housing solutions can act as models for the private housing stock and then when the numbers come uh, from those interventions you can demonstrate the economic benefits and the uh, benefits of reducing the energy needs by using the municipal uh, building stock as an example and then that reduces the risk for the private sector to also engage in those actions and just to add how, how do people sort of take these issues in, in Helsinki um, I think there are some uh, forward thinking uh, people in the housing cooperative field and I think those people when you put the, those people in touch uh, with their peer group with the other housing cooperative board members they can sort of um, put these ideas to uh, forward um, to new, new people so I think there is some sort of interest uh, very strongly in, in some people and when you when you create or facilitate those district social networks between the housing cooperative board members they sort of uh, spread uh, that motivation that has been somehow the indication already in in our activities but I'm happy to talk more about this <laughs> later on maybe uh, may I um, give a comment about that also this is Margaret um, in Germany we have a lot lot of renters and uh, more than in other countries I think so um, uh, one of the arguments we had that they will save by saving energy uh, as a result of retrofitting the rents um, uh, not the rents but the energy uh, what they pay for energy and heating will be will stay low and so we had some um, uh, you know, there's an association which is uh, representing the renters in Germany. Uh, we had some um, very good um, uh, talks with them, and and that really helped uh, to that they convinced the um, the owner of the buildings because the owner of the buildings are not the the users, and that's I think that's a big um, uh, argument you have to look after when you uh, do this work. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Natalia, your, your question's answered? Um, I think so. I will go back to Maria um, yeah. as to the environmental report that is available in English and some more detailed yeah, questions. So. <laughs> Thank you. Any other discussion points? Kishal, is there anything that you would like to ask or you think you need some last minute input with regard to the solution booklets or are you happy? Uh, I was just wondering like if uh, in a participant, apart from the, the barriers and the solutions, especially the barriers that are presented in the, in the slides, do you, have you encountered any other barriers so society governance financial uh, in your projects yes i mean I, we have done yes. so 
So question with regard to barriers, technical well, barriers. I just want to say again, uh, one barrier we have at this time is that the enterprise able to do the retrofit works have too much works uh, at this time. So we will face uh, difficulty uh, to uh, really uh, increase the numbers of uh, retrofit uh, works and we'll have to uh, work with those enterprises to uh, be sure they will uh, form enough people uh, to do the job. Yeah, um, I, can, I, I kind of agree with uh, what uh, Jonathan just mentioned. I, I've also experienced that in uh, uh, in Oxford, there was there was definitely a lack of skills, a lack of skilled labor to be able to do internal external cavity wall or loft insulation. Mm -hmm. I have at the moment you have mm -hmm. that you kind of have what they what they call in the UK kind of quote unquote cowboys entering the market, and then if we and then we, and then it becomes something where it's kind of a trust issue. Uh, so uh, that's that's an experience from my side. Yeah. Okay. I have another, this is Margaret. I have another barrier I would like to mention. Um, is the energy price, the, at least in Germany, we have such a low energy price that many uh, owners say, why should we invest? Because it will never pay back. This is the argument we were talking about before, but it's a very important um, uh, argument when we talk to the owners. And you have to be an owner. If you invest, you have to be very. Um, you 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 must not only look at the economic um, uh, barrier, but uh, uh, economic uh, aspect, but also the other aspects of saving uh, CO2 and things like that. But this was for us. It was one of the biggest barriers at all. The money. Yeah. Thank you, Margaret. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? <clears throat> and to, to complete this uh, comment, uh, we also face uh, some people that say, uh, well, well, the energy price is low in France as well. And in winter, our winter are less and less uh, cold. So uh, if we, in the future, are not uh, to uh, have cold winter, why to retrofit our buildings? And the other point is that we have to keep in mind that we have to work on uh, winter comfort, but as well uh, to summer comfort. And that will be the challenge for tomorrow uh, if we don't want to uh, have um, climatization uh, installed in, instead of, uh, instead of uh, warming. Yeah. I mean that's the that's the that's the reverse argument for kind of climate change adaptation, is it not? Uh, a comfortable, well insulated apartment or house in the winter is warm and in the summer it's cool. So it's in a way a kind of climate change adaptation measure. It can it can be, uh, but it, we have to be um, careful uh, to be sure that uh, it will work in the two uh, season, uh, because some uh, works can be worse uh, if it's not uh, well done. But if it's okay. well done, it will uh, help for the two season. Yeah. OK. Yes, it's Katarzyna from city of Bedos. Can I say something? Hello. Hello, Hello. I'm not sure, maybe I missed missed uh, some information, but uh, I would like to underline also that in the city of Bydgoszcz we have a um, revitalization program, okay, and the revitalization program uh, covers not only social aspects, uh, which are devoted, uh, the activities devoted to people with low income, unemployed to help them, yes, but also in the area of building. So the essential uh, part of man is um, directed to retrofitting uh, of buildings within this program. Okay. Yes. So I just wanted to mention that. 
And what, what buildings are we talking about, Katashina? Oh, these are uh, buildings in the old uh, areas of the city. Old buildings, okay. uh, public. Okay. Um, okay. Mostly of them are public. Uh, okay. uh, I, I said uh, private, sorry, private. Private, private, yeah. okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks. I think we, if there are no other comments or discussion points, I would like to wrap up, but that doesn't mean I'm stopping you from saying something now. Okay. I would like to thank Marine from Nantes Metropole, Jonathan, Margit from Hamburg, Maria from Helsinki, Kisha from Vito, uh, for your presentations, your discussions, everybody who joined us in the call. Um, I hope you've taken away some key points with regard to retrofit. Um, if you want to find our details, learn more, go on the My Smart Life website. Um, the other option is stay tuned to SCIS, the Smart City Information System, where he shall will start working on his solution booklet. And we're looking forward to that. So when that has been published, I'll make sure I'll put it on the My Smart Life Twitter channel so you hear about it and you can look it up. Um, thank you everybody for taking part and uh, for your support. So I'm saying goodbye from uh, Steinbeis, from Gabi and Annika. It's also raining in Stuttgart in case you're interested. And uh, talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.